Hello everybody, this is Shannon with Beads and Babble, and I am back with another project that is beach friendly. So these are the elements and the tools that we are going to be using today. And as you can see, there's not much of it. Once again, we will be using some Eslon cord. This is the heavy, which is the Tex 400, and it's kind of a, a sandy brown. So, and you can use whatever color you choose. Um, I'm also going to be using some large hole pearls, a mother of pearl focal bead, a few of these beautiful check glass white heart aqua Picasso beads. And as you can see, you don't need that many. They're going to be kind of the accent um, bead. Uh, I have a starfish charm along with a jump ring here, an extension chain with a split ring attached, and a stainless steel lobster claw. And I am using uh, stainless steel uh, components, just a little bit more hardy when it comes to being exposed to water and stuff. And then this is what we'll be making today, this beach bracelet. Very fun, very durable, and very beach friendly. And I will set this aside and then we'll go ahead and get started here. Oh, I'm sorry, I did. I got to go over the tools. We're going to need some sharp shears for cutting the Eslon, um, a tube. Actually, I don't think we will need the tube. We're not doing barrel knots. We're just doing regular overhand knots. Some knotting, um, pl uh, well, pliers, tweezers, if you don't have them, it's not a big deal. You can just use your fingers. Um, I tend to be more clumsy, so I use them. And then a thread burner for uh, cutting the ends, which it does a couple of things. It, it cuts clean and it seals the nylon thread so it doesn't fray. But another option is something like this. It's fray check. You can find it in the... Um, sewing section like at Walmart and stuff and you could just dab a little bit on the end and it keeps the um and it, it's it's kind of smelly so um it keeps the um thread from fraying cord so we're going to cut approximately four feet probably probably three and a half four feet will be fine for this we're doing some knotting And I always usually like to err on the side of caution and cut more than I need, especially of the cord, since it's not um, overly expensive. And then I will show you what I did here, because this is going to be, this cord is going to be uh, doubled, which also gives it more durability um, as well. So you're, you have... So we're going to, this time we, um, unlike the anklets we are, that we made in the um, part one series of the beach friendly jewelry, we are going to knot in between each bead on this bracelet. Uh, one good thing about knotting is when, you know, when, if it breaks or it gets, um, if it gets cut or something, a lot of times you're only going to um lose a couple of beads, not all of them, because the knots are going to keep the beads on. And so it can be restrung and, and um, repaired rarely, very easily without losing that. That's a lot of times why they do expensive pearls knotting that way than it, when the, the thread, you know, after it ages and it's been worn, um, you know, sometimes decades, um, if it breaks, you're not going to lose all the pearls because it's knotted in between. So... Alrighty, so I'm going to set this up here, actually over here, so it's out of my way. We're going to start off with bringing uh, the cord, cut cord ends together, and then we're going to slip on the lobster claw directly onto the cord. And we're just, I'm just getting it to the halfway point on the cord, and we're going to do an overhand knot. It's a simple overhand knot. Just bring it down till we have like eighth of an inch, about like that. Just get it so it's nice and 
you got movement, so there's not any tight, and it's not so snug against the lobster claw, there's not going to be movement, because in jewelry, you definitely want nice movement on all of the um, sections of the jewelry. It will keep it um, comfortable, and also the durability will last longer. Anytime you have stuff that's too tight and stuff, it wears, it rubs, so keep that in mind when you're making uh, jewelry as well. So I am going to start off with a pearl. And what I did here is I did a section. I did do a little um, silver bead here, but on this one, I'm not going to do that. Um, I did a, uh, two pearls, an accent bead, two pearls, an accent bead. So, and this makes a bracelet that is... And I'm making this for somebody too. So this bracelet is going to be eight and a half, nine inches long. But you can adjust the pearls as you need. You can take a section. You can leave us. You can do one pearl, then you know, and do it that way so you get the length you want. So you can plan this design out um, for the size that you are wanting to achieve at the end of the um, process. And I, this is the size I wanted, so I lined out the beads and kind of roughly decided what I was going to do. And then you have the extender chain, which will give you adjustability of an inch or so. So I strung the first large hole pearl on both cords and pushed it down against the knot. Now I'm just going to do a simple overhand knot. And this is where my tweezers come in handy for me. And what you do is you go in through the back side of the loop and you just pull until you get that cord down because this will give an actual, and the reason I chose the heavy C-line cord is because it's going to give you a nice size knot because these are large hole pearls and you don't want them slipping over the knot. So, and then there's our first set of knots. All right, and then I'm going to grab another pearl. Large hole pearl, aren't those nice? Usually pearls are not, their holes are very tiny. But these are specifically drilled large. And I do carry them in the shop. I'll give you, it is um, inventory number PRL15. And I have a silver one. I'm out of the um, kind of uh, blue black one get some more of those but we have kind of a silvery blue which would be pretty and we have the um natural well they're all natural but um this kind of uh pearly white decent luster i mean especially for i mean there's different grades of pearls and you can get some ones that are very expensive um depends on their luster their shape, all kinds of stuff. You can go crazy with pearls. I love freshwater pearls. I made a pair of earrings for my uh, youngest son's wife for her wedding day, and they looked so gorgeous on her. She wears them to this day. All right, and now I'm going to string on both cords. All, all the beads are going on both cords, and I'm going to string on one of these Picasso White Heart Aqua beads. And when they say white heart, it's because the inside is white and then they um, come over it with a clear um, aqua in this case, but there are different ones that'll do yellow, red, green, blue, orange sometimes. Orange is harder to find than most of the colors. They'll do a cobalt. Then we're going to knot. We're knotting in between. We're doing simple overhand knots in between each of the beads and pearls. And this will go fairly fast for you. And then I bring that knot down and I pull the cords apart and kind of it kind of that centers it and also locks it in against the bead um, more firmly. And I'm going to continue with this pattern on the one that I've already made. So, pearl. And 
And thank you, um, everybody that's been leaving comments, you, encouraging comments. Wow, just so nice of everybody. Um, I, I can't believe all the encouragement I've got since I've started this channel. Um, and I know that it's been a learning process for me. Um, and I appreciate you guys being patient as I learn what works and what doesn't. And as you can see, I'm just knotting in between simple overhand knots, bring them down against the beads and pearls. Super easy. You can use, and like I said, your this design, same thing as the anklets, you're only limited by the size, the whole size of the beads. As long as the whole, yeah, the whole side's big enough to accommodate the cording that you're going to be using. And I'm using this Eslon because it's a tried and true for me, as in for like beachwear and stuff. It It's very durable um, because, you know, people like to wear their anklets and stuff to the beach. They're not going to take them off when they get in the ocean or, you know, when they're, they're putting on their suntan. A lot of people don't. Um, so you got to find something that works for those situations. And like I said, as long as you're careful about the metals you choose, um, or just, um, omit them, you know, don't take them out of the equation except for like the clasp and stuff. But nowadays you can pick up stainless steel clasps and stuff fairly, um, easily. So you can get those and those have more durability for, um, for wear and stuff and anything metal that's shiny is going to tarnish and um, oxidize. So it'd be best to stay with any of the antique finishes that are already um, patinaed because that way then you're not going to get that drastic change from a really bright finish to this kind of old, you know, age. Some people appreciate that um, like I do, but other people don't. They like their jewelry to stay shiny and they're just not, you're not going to get that with this kind of wear you know, for beachy wear and stuff like that. So keep that in mind when you're designing. But these are very durable, like the pearls and these seed beads. This Picasso finish is um, permanent. It's very nice. Um, so that's one thing about the Picasso finish on the beads and stuff. It is a really nice finish because it's durable. Unlike, you know, and, and stay away from any coated seed beads, the same. Any coated seed beads, um, any um, dyed seed beads, any uh, fancy finished seed beads, you'll want to stay with. You'll want to um, stay with, the, I'm sorry, I had a little message pop up on the iPad as, or, or the pad that I was I'm watching this video on and I was like, hopefully it doesn't stop my video. It didn't. Um, I had that happen to me. So that's why I was pausing there for a moment. And I'm just continuing with this pattern. And like I was saying, you, uh, you just want to stay with things like uh, that are color all the way through, like solid colors, no fancy finishes because they're going to most likely come off uh, when they're exposed to um, salt water and stuff. So, but freshwater pearls, um, opaque seed beads, even if the um, translucent seed beads are um, not coated, but um, through color, which means they're a uh, true color all the way through, will be fine. And pearls, uh, some gemstones, you can actually uh, Google and make sure that um, the gemstone will be okay if you use it for um, you know, in the water and stuff. Some of them are softer than others and not a good fit for this type of jewelry. Okay, I'm on my last pearl. I'm just going to do my overhand knot. And once again, thank you subscribers, new and old, um, and the comments have been wonderful and very encouraging. I appreciate that. Um, I will be coming out with more um, videos, but I'm a one woman show. So I do, I personally handle all your orders when you place them in the store and from start to finish and uh, just have patience with me. I will take care of you. Um, I, I'm a firm believer in customer service and 
having great customer service, um, your opinion and your loyalty matter to me greatly. I'm a small business. I've been in business since 2008. Um, you know, I, I, and so I appreciate every person that stops by the store. I'm going to grab two of these, um, round saucer beads that I used here. Um, because I, these hole, this hole on this, uh, focal bead is rather large and the knot will slip through. And I forgot to add those to here, to it there. So I'm going to grab those real quick in my little stash over here. Bear with me. And as you can see, these are stainless steel as well. The stainless steel is a little bit more pricey, but for this particular um, jewelry, it's worth the investment. You know, uh, beach jewelry is very popular too. So, and we're getting into that season. So it's kind of nice. So I'm gonna string that on and then I'm gonna string my focal on, which I have a bunch of new beads I need to get up in the store. And these are one of them. These are just gorgeous. I have a, a few different ones, but they make amazing focals. And then I'm going to slide on the other. I guess this is more like a she shape, like a disc. Out of my private stash. My husband and my sons like to make fun of me and say, I have more beads than one woman should ever have in her life. <laughs> I started beading when I was in the sixth grade on loom and my dad gave me a box of seed beads and I just went with that and then every almost every weekend after that we'd go to Tandy's Leather Company I don't know if you guys remember that or not but go out there and pick out my seed beads boy I had so many alrighty so we're basically at the halfway point and then I'm gonna continue and I hope you guys don't mind the lengths of the videos I just find that um, I'm a social creature anyway, so I like, um, talking as I'm working and kind of giving you guys, um, tips and also a little, a little bit of story, a backstory about me. I think it's important that, um, people know who they're, um, who they're watching, who they're buying from, and, you know, small businesses took a huge hit during the pandemic. I mean, goodness, I know some of them didn't survive and that's so sad to me. I was lucky. Um, my customers were so incredible. And um, I'm internet based, so I don't have a brick and mortar. Um, so, you know, people could still shop and everything, but people that had brick and mortars really, oh my gosh, I tried to be as supportive as I could during the pandemic while we were in California, but it was just so hard because they kept closing everybody and the restrictions were so incredibly um, stern and stuff. So it was really hard. Alrighty. And with nodding, you're going to get that kind of, they're not going to lay perfect, but that's kind of the charm of nodding. Um, but it, it'll, it lays nice and it, it's comfortable. So I'm just going to can uh, mirror this pattern on the opposite side now. Just gonna keep going and as you see I'm stringing all the beads on both strands and I'm just doing overhand knots between each bead and then I'm just bringing it in snug using my handy dandy knotting tweezers couldn't survive without them I'm too fumbly now that I'm older there's some days I can't hold on to anything oh drives me nuts my husband the same way and we love, we're, we love doing our, we both have hobbies we love and it requires sometimes some intricate work and we have, some days we're like, oh, I don't even want to even attempt it. But I will be coming, um, also I have some ideas. I know for me, one of the um, things I struggled with, because I have three boys, grown grown men now, um, with their own families, but my, um, you know, they were raised in a family of jewelry making and all that stuff. And it is hard to, um, make masculine jewelry, you know, and, you know, and stuff, especially out of beads, you know? And, um, 
So I learned how to, I kind of, my youngest son is my, probably my best um, model for uh, a jewelry. I make, he likes leather. He likes a lot of leather. He, um, so I'll make him leather um, uh, bracelets and he wears them and he gets a lot of compliments on them, which is really nice feedback for me. And so I'm going to come out with a couple um, videos on unisex or male oriented jewelry as well. Cause I mean, some guys like it, their jewelry and, um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I, um, I particularly wish my husband would wear more, um, bracelets and stuff like that. Oops. He tends not to, but, um, that's just because he is a, he hard, sometimes he has to take off his wedding ring just because he's very, very active in his, yard work and um he does a lot of woodworking as you know and as i've said and so he's working with power tools and stuff so he doesn't want anything getting caught on anything so he doesn't usually wear them but my youngest son does morgan he wears them a lot and i'm gonna make some um, bracelets for him but i'm going to show them in a tutorial so We'll see how that uh, goes over. You guys will have to give me your um, opinions on that and how how you see it, and if the men in your life will wear that wear it. So I'm on the last pearl now. Coming in through the back side of that opening, bring that knot down, and as you can see, this goes pretty fast. You can um, sit down and make a, quite a few of these um, for. If you're going to any of the craft shows, I know here locally um, they're starting because spring is, you know, here and we're, they're starting to um, get really excited about, about it. So, alrighty. So now I'm going to bring in this chain here. And what it, I did was I attached a split ring to the chain. And this chain is approximately an inch and a quarter long. So that gives you adjustability at the end. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread one cord through the split ring. Let it drop down. And if you wanted to, you could put seed beads on the cord on either side, like we did with the anklet to give it a little bit more flash. But I am just going to do that. So it, whoops, the split ring is on one cord. And then we're just going to do an overhand knot just to um, basically secure that in there. So at the end. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of room there, just like I did with the lobster claw. So we'll have a, I'm just tightening the knot using my fingers here. Okay, I'll bring this up this way so you can see what I'm doing. Same here. Now I'm going to make these little tassels. I am really slipping today. <laughs> I thought I had all my elements. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> So what I'm using is two of these stainless steel, probably they're about four millimeter um, uh, disc beads. And then I'm using some six millimeter, same finish here, Picasso Aqua White Heart beads as my little dangles. And I'm threading them on one of the cord ends. Now, as you can make these as long or short as you want, or you cannot, you, you cannot have them and you just cut that off and seal it with a thread burner. So, and I'm going to do a overhand knot once, and then I'm going to come back in through the loop again. That's just going to give me a little bit nicer of a knot and uh, bigger of a knot too. And I'll show you here once I get it all situated. So there's that. And then I'm going to do it to this side. And you can put whatever, you know, beads or tassels or whatever. You don't even have to put beads on these if you don't want to. And you just want a little bit of thread frill at the end. But a little weight's always nice when you're having a little bit of a um, tassel. Well, I guess, I don't know, tasseled in. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm doing an overhand and then through. And I don't particularly worry if I get them the same size or not. I think that's part of the charm is, you know, they can be random. Or they can, if you want them the same, you can do that if you choose. Alrighty. 
And then I'm going to bring in the thread burner. This is where this comes in really handy because once you cut the um, S long cord with the thread burner, it melts the end so it keeps them from fraying. And I'll go back and you can do them as long as you want. But as you can see, it kind of leaves them nice. And I'll usually go back and kind of give it a little tap and then make sure that they're all, you know, both that it's sealed so it doesn't fray. And as you can see, I don't have too much cording left from the four feet. So you don't really waste that much. And a lot of times I'll keep those for barrel knots. I have a little like bend that um, I keep my threads in because a lot of times I'll do, um, I'll have to show you a project that I use the remnants of the uh, cord with. Alrighty, and so now we're gonna put on the um, charm. Grab my two pairs of pliers. Your it can be two bent nose, flat nose, but it's just to open and close the uh, jump ring, which I should have showed. Said this was in the part of it too, but most of the time, I'm assuming you guys have your pliers and stuff handy when you're doing this, but or you're doing this after you've watched it once. And then I'm going to attach the charm. Actually, did I? I did I try? I did chat. I did. I'm going to actually attach this charm. I didn't, I did this on the actual um, split ring, but I'm going to actually add this one to the end of the chain. Which you can do, you can put your charm wherever you want. And you can also do a little dangle if you wanted to as well. But like I said, jewelry is honestly, it is what you perceive you want. Um, you can do how it, make it as fancy or as plain as you like. Um, honestly, it's really um, you who's doing the designing and finding what works for you. And, you know, giving it a little bit, a little extra element. Um, you can take these up a notch. And, and please feel free to send me um, pictures of completed projects. Um, my email is um, beadsandbabble at gmail, which is my store name at gmail. Feel free to reach out with out to me. I, I get um, lots of emails from customers. I'm happy to answer if I can anything that you might be uh, problems or if you want some advice on what, you know, on a technique or something and I have it in my wheelhouse, I will happily share with you. Um, one of my favorite things is sharing what I've learned throughout my years uh, making jewelry and I'm, I'm creeping up on four decades <laughs> of jewelry making. So if you have any questions about this particular project, just leave them in the comments section below. I read all the comments um, and I respond to them and I appreciate them. And if you haven't um, subscribed to our channel, please do. Um, I'm going to be putting out um, new content regularly. Um, also, if you like this video, hit that like button for me. It helps me out, helps grow my channel, which is what I'm trying to do so I can reach more uh, people with these tutorials. I'm really enjoying them, actually. I, I, I more than I even realized when I started this. Um, I wish I would have started this channel like years earlier, but I've been a one woman show for so long that I try to not stretch myself out too thin. So I'm, I'm sure everybody can relate. Um, also, I wanted to um, show you a few other like, little tips. So if you're working with a lot of thread like Eslon or um, looming and stuff, these are conditioners. This is just a simple beeswax. This is called Thread Heaven. It's a thread conditioner and protectant. Um, so if you find that you're fraying you know, a lot, you can take your, um, your cording and drag it through. And this one is just you open it and then you slide it against and it will help keep the thread from fraying. So these are not a bad investment. Uh, one or the other depends on what you like. Um, but for it, for anybody that's doing a lot of stringing and stuff and cord usage, having some of those around is great. Um, and like I said, the, the freight um, check is good also for the cord ends um, to keep them from fraying as well. And you can find that in the sewing section of the craft stores or the uh, Walmart um, usually has it as well. But so here are our bracelets. Now you can also take this design and make it an anklet as well. 
Um, bracelets and anklets are honestly um, fairly similar. It's just length um, that you would have to adjust for. And I'm working on, like I said, I've been saying this a couple of videos, but I'm working on getting a page on the website, uh, on my store site with the charts, simple um, charts about jewelry, uh, common jewelry, uh, sizes and lengths and then seed beads because I get a lot of questions about seed beads because it's very confusing um, you know the check measurements are aughts and people get that you know they're like what does this mean and and stuff so it's a very common question that I get so I'll be getting that up here in the months following as time permits um, so until the next video I'll be seeing you